All right, good morning, friends. Uh, did you miss me? Because I miss seeing you guys. I miss teaching. I miss commenting with you and enjoying what was going on. Uh, took off Thursday and Friday, if you're new with us, and uh, finished the book of Philippians, getting ready to start the book of James, and I can't wait. Uh, so it's going to be a fun ride. Uh, there's so much good truth in this, and I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we had a we had a good week in church yesterday. It was crazy good. Enjoyed just hanging out. We couldn't get people to leave. It was just that everybody wanted to hang out and chat, and it was just awesome when those kind of things happen. And uh, Saturday we did a little work trying to finish up a patio out front so we can uh, sit there and watch all of our uh, friends walk the neighborhood. Um, and so it's going to be uh, it's been been fun. It's a great weekend. Went out to dinner Friday night. It's always good. Went to lunch Saturday. Anytime I can hang out with the Tamster like that, it's just a great day. Uh, but it's a new week, brand new, and uh, we are um, man, middle of August already. Uh, weather's good, not as hot as it should have been. So uh, enough about the chit-chat. We're going to jump into the book of James. And uh, hey, why don't you go ahead right now while you're thinking about it, hit that share button. You know, and when you see this, I know a lot of you aren't on now. You're going to see it later. Would you just hit that share button, kind of share this video? I really want to impact as many people as I can with the truth. And uh, so I'd just love it if you would help me out in that, in that vein. So we're, we're looking at the book of James. Now, you're going to find that uh, in, the, in the New Testament, somewhere near the, the back side of that thing. And um, it's a really powerful book. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about James because it, that matters. Uh, there are several James in the scriptures that are mentioned of. Uh, James, actually the word in the, in the Hebrew is uh, Jacob, which is uh, Jacob. And so, but James is the term that's used... Uh, in the in the vernacular of the New Testament, as as those names would be transliterated different ways, and so there's several Jameses in the Bible. There's uh, James, who was the brother of John, James and John, the sons of thunder. The father father was Zebedee. Uh, James and John, Peter and Andrew were their dads were partners in a fishing uh, industry, and so they were friends. And that's how eventually when Jesus met them, that's how. The four of them kind of came to be a part of the apostles. Uh, he was killed relatively early, 44 A.D. Uh, James, uh, the brother of John, was, um, and so but Herod killed him, had him killed, and he so he died really before this book would have been written. So James kind of lets him out. He's not the one that's going to do it. There's James, the son of Alphaeus. Um, not much known about him. Probably not the author. In fact, we're fairly certain that he's not the author of this, but he's mentioned in the scriptures. And then there was James, who was the father of Judas. But the scriptures clear not Judas Iscariot, but one of the other uh, one of the others named Judas. And and neither one of them are mentioned really in church history. You don't see much about them. The one that's prominent, which is kind of an interesting story, is James, who is the half brother of Jesus. Now we call him a half brother because his dad was uh, Joseph, and his mom was Mary, but you remember Jesus, his mother was, was Mary, but Joseph wasn't his biological father. Uh, he, was, he was born of the Holy Spirit. So uh, we call him a half-brother, but they grew up together as brothers, and the whole world knew them to be that. And, and actually, maybe you didn't know this, but, but Jesus had several brothers and sisters. He had uh, James, who was the one under him, and then there was Joseph and Simon and Judas, and then there were at least three sisters. So he had a fairly sizable family. His dad was a carpenter, and James is one of the brothers. Now, here's some facts about James that maybe, maybe you're not familiar with. James, um, his brothers didn't believe him to be the Son of God. They, in fact, they thought he was kind of out of his head. Listen, let me read to you in John chapter 7. It says, after these things, Jesus was in Galilee, getting ready to go to a feast. He was unwilling to walk in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the feast of the Jews, the feast of booths, was near. Therefore his brother said to him, Hey, why don't you leave here and go to Judea? <laughs> They're encouraging him to go where he was, uh, where there was going to be some craziness. And uh, so that your disciples also, not, not we your disciples, but your, your people, uh, may see your works which you were doing. For no one does anything in secret when he, when he himself seeks to be known publicly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers were believing in him. In fact, in Mark chapter 3, uh, they tell a story where they thought he was uh, out of his mind. They, so his family, like, okay, the guy's kind of crazy, right? Now, you've you got to imagine growing up with Jesus where literally he did nothing wrong. 
Now, I'm sure he got accused of doing wrong, like a lot of us growing up that, you know, did some things. We did a lot of things, but there were some things we didn't do, but we got accused of. I'm sure Jesus did. And I'm sure it bothered his brother that he was like always Mr. Perfect. Um, but but uh, that was kind of what was going on, on on there in that in that realm. And so then Jesus, uh, after the resurrection, Jesus showed himself uh, to uh, uh, James. So he showed himself in, in Paul's pretty specific in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 about who who Jesus showed himself to, and he showed him to you know Mary and and, and uh, Peter, and then John, and then uh, the disciples, and then to 500. But then it specifically says that he visited with James, and so there at that moment we assume is when James was transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That he saw much like Paul, who untimely born, so to speak. Uh, came to Christ after the fact uh, that that James, in that encounter, having seen his brother risen from the dead and having a conversation with him, uh, you would imagine that would right transform you. So James became a believer. James was in the upper room. Remember when Jesus told the disciples to stay right here in Jerusalem and wait uh, for the promise, which was the Holy Spirit, for then you shall receive power and you'll be my witnesses. So they did that. So they all gathered in an upper room, and they lit, they actually kind of had rooms in this upper room so that they were all staying there. And James was one of the ones that was staying up there, according to Acts chapter uh, chapter 1. And so they're waiting for the promised Holy Spirit. So James was there when Pentecost took place. James was a leader, um, the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. I love the fact that, that that's what happened. you got all these apostles, yet when the church was established, James became the one who led the church, one of the leaders there. Galatians chapter 2 tells us that. Uh, in fact, Paul calls him a pillar of the community. So James was this prominent force, probably slightly because Jesus was his big brother, um, but but at any rate, that's where he was. So when Peter was delivered from, uh, from prison later on in the scriptures, it was to James that he sent the letter. He sent the girl uh, and said, "Hey, go go find James and let him know that we've been that we've been released from from prison." They were in a big meeting praying. Uh, in fact, the, the girl comes, knocks on the door, and uh, says, "Hey, you know, Peter's been been uh, you know, our, our Peter stands says he's freed." And uh, they're like, "No, nah, you, you can't be because I mean, he, we're praying for him." Uh, kind of one of those crazy stories. Um, so then, uh, Paul and Barnabas are sent out. I'm giving you a real flyby. Paul and Barnabas are sent out. Uh, to share Christ, and so when they come to the Gentiles, and the and the Gentiles come to faith, the Jews said, "Well, now they're going to have to be circumcised." So a big argument arose. So they have a big council meeting in Jerusalem. So so Paul and Barnabas come to give their account of the fact that the Gentiles were saved. And while this big council, all the apostles and elders of Jerusalem are there, uh, you hear the conversation take place, and then James steps up and gives the decision, which lets us know that James was kind of the spokesman the pastor, so to speak, uh, of that church. You can find that in Acts chapter 15. Really interesting uh, debate of, of what took place there about how do we bring the, the Gentiles into uh, the community of believers. Uh, when uh, Paul brought a report to Jerusalem about what was going on in the Gentile world, and, and then he, uh, he, and he took up money to help the Jerusalem church because it was impoverished at that time because of persecution, famine, and all of that. So Paul meets with James and gives him money and gives him a report. So so we know that James was somewhat prominent in, in this whole deal. So James wrote this letter to the saints scattered abroad. That's what he says. So he's pastoring a church in Jerusalem. There's great persecution. There's great famine. Um, there's, there's great persecution and, and poverty, and so they've scattered, leaving there. He's got a smaller congregation now, very impoverished, because those who stayed uh, really probably had no other place to go. And so, and so he's just pastoring this church of, of ragtag believers from a worldly perspective. Um, and, and so he writes to the saints scattered abroad, because he's a pastor. He cares about his people, whether they're in his fellowship or whether they've scattered about. Now, in, uh, he probably, this was... Really, the only book you wrote is is so powerful. I want to give you a little intro to some of that. Um, but uh, James wrote this somewhere sixty A.D. So Christ uh, was uh, uh, crucified in thirty three. So it's been you know what twenty seven years uh, that he's walked 
uh, as a as a pastor um, doing what he does. And so uh, in 62 AD, a couple of years after he wrote this book, uh, the Jews will get so upset with him that they're going to take him to the temple, throw him off of the temple, and then beat him with what they call fuller's clubs. Uh, that's the tradition of what happened to James. So he lost his life being beaten to death after having been tossed from the temple. And the last words that he spoke were the same words that uh, his he his brother had spoken, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And and I, I love James. I love this book. Uh, I give this book kind of a theme, uh, living life out loud, because that's what James is really striving for us to do, to, to live out what we know. It's it, it writes, he writes a lot like the Sermon on the Mount. You can see you can see the effects of Jesus' life and all those sermons. You know, when you're growing up, and you, you hear your parents say things, and you're not even paying attention, or you hear, you know, a preacher say stuff, and you're not paying attention. But once, once you you grow up and you realize there's a lot of truth that you heard that came to you. This is how James was. He may not have cared about Jesus, seeing him as the Son of God when they grew up, but he couldn't help but having heard the stories and what Jesus would say as they would gather for meal times. Uh, as 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 family, and so it it weighs on him. You can you can tell that the Sermon on the Mount has come alive in James. So he's going to write very similar to Jesus when it comes to that. The other thing that's fairly prominent in this is you're going to see uh, I think the evidence of the Proverbs, the wisdom uh, letters, uh, in, infused into what James writes. He's not writing like Paul. Uh, you know, he's, he's not writing in some uh, kind of a teaching format. Paul's usual deal is to give great doctrine in the first half of a book and then tell you how to apply it in the second half. Uh, that's not how James writes. James writes a lot like Jesus. He's just going to give you bite-sized nuggets. It, it's so powerful because it touches on so many different themes. But the, the whole deal is called, I think we could say it's, it's wholeness. That uh, that that we should we should our actions should match what we know, uh, and so our thoughts and our attitudes and our actions all should be cohesive in one in one movement, so that there's no hypocrisy in us at all. What we believe, we live, and so I kind of tag this living out loud, and and we're going to see some incredible themes through this. He's going to talk about uh, persecution. He's going to talk about endurance. He's going to, like Paul in Philippians, where there was great joy, uh, James sees great joy in everything. He's so confident in who God is. He's the God of, of, of no shifting shadows. He's constant. He's the giver of good gifts. You're going to hear him speak of that. So he's, he's, he's prominent in those things. He's going to talk about key issues like love and what it looks like. He's going to write a lot like John, uh, the apostle. And Jesus, when it, when he speaks of, of love, he's going to talk about faith, and and how how it should be lived out, and what faith looks like. In fact, when they were uh, deciding what books were going to be part of the what we call the canon, the collected scriptures that we now hold in our hands, James is the council uh, was was looking at at whether that book was was uh, accurate. Was it was it life giving? Was it dynamic? Was it did it bear truth? Was it written by someone prominent? These are there were several things tests, so to speak, as as uh, God moved among men to decide what books would be gathered. Because there were a lot of books written that would uh, that were just false and and, and non true. But but James, they were like, eh, we're not. It looks like he's talking about works an awful lot here. And grace obviously is a central theme throughout the scriptures. But uh, so James makes that statement: Show me your works. Uh, show show me your faith. Uh, by, with, without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. So Paul, uh, uh, James is saying rather, my faith is demonstrated in how I live my life, and so faith is a big deal. Our speech is a big deal. It's in this passage that he says, can, can fresh water and bitter water come out of the same well? I think not. And so we're going to talk about how our speech should match up, and this is going to be very convicting for us. He talks about money uh, and, and how it can't own us. He talks about status. And, and how we all try to kind of achieve this pecking order and why wow, that's just silliness. Uh, he talks about endurance, about that we're in this thing for the long haul. He's big on prayer and talks about that in great, uh, great aspect. And he's going to hit surrender really hard. And so this is the book that we're getting ready to look at. And I can't wait to share it with you. I would encourage you, 
uh, to do a couple of things. One, it's not that long of a book, but read it. One sitting. See if you can find, carve out maybe 25 minutes just to read it in one sitting. Get a, get a translation. Doesn't matter what translation really, because we're going to, I'm going to break it down for you in, in kind of the, the, the original language and things like that. But, but um, just, just read it. If you can't read the whole thing, I mean, I can't imagine your life being that busy. You can't read the whole thing. At least read the first chapter because we're going to jump into it tomorrow. And, uh, and I can't wait uh, to, to, to jump in there with you. Listen, just do me a favor. Hit the share button. Let your friends know that we're doing this thing. Uh, it's going to be really good. And one of the greatest things you could do for your friends is just introduce them to the Word of God. And, and I, I hope you trust me that I'm not going to say anything that, that violates what the Scriptures would teach uh, we don't give a lot of opinion here. We just share truth. I'd love it if you would share that. And uh, until tomorrow, I hope you guys have a great day. Be bold out there. Be safe out there. And uh, love on people out there because everybody's got some sort of struggle that they're going through. Love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.